Hi, my name is Mark Ratchford. I'm a wildlife technician here in Zion National Park, out here for my third summer season in southern Utah. I'm originally from Ohio, where I attended Ohio University and studied wildlife and conservation biology. So tonight, out here in the Slot Canyon, I'm going to be conducting a Mexican spotted owl survey. And this is one of many slot canyons we have in the park here in the maze of tributaries feeding down into the Virgin River. In Zion Canyon, down below us, we're about five to 700 feet above the canyon floor up here. So it's much cooler and we're protected by these steep sandstone walls on either side, which are part of the Navajo sandstone layer. Canyon walls here are very featured and contoured, filled with pockets, wacos, ledges, all kinds of great perching habitat for Mexican spotted owls. Um, the bottom of the canyon is lush and green with a nice mixed canopy of a little bit of deciduous with mixed conifer thrown in and a lot of nice dense understory with a lot of downed wood conducive to prey species out here. And this is some of the best Mexican spotted owl habitat we have in the park. Mexican spotted owls are a subspecies of spotted owl of which two subspecies are protected. Northern spotted owls are found up in the Pacific Northwest and inhabit an old growth forest with complex multi-layered understories and they are listed as threatened. California spotted owls dwell throughout California, largely in the Sierra Nevada, and they are currently not listed as threatened or endangered. Mexican spotted owls are endemic to Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico, stretching a ways down south into Mexico. And they're currently listed as threatened. Mexican spotted owls occupy pine oak forest and mixed conifer forest through the majority of their range. However, out here in Zion and other hot desert sections of the Colorado Plateau, uh, a geographic area stretching between southern Utah, northern Arizona, and out to four corner areas a little bit into Colorado and New Mexico. Uh, they'll often nest in walls of rock canyons rather than their typical forest habitat. Uh, where they will often nest in trees and snags, repurposing nests from squirrels and other raptors. Our owls out here are still the same sp subspecies, but they're just using a different habitat type to mirror the conditions in their usual habitat. Um, these canyons get a lot less sun and are more consistent temperatures throughout the day and nighttime. And they're very heat sensitive, so cooler temperatures are much more comfortable for them. And they tend to habit, <coughs> excuse me, inhabit long and narrow canyons like this one that are at least a kilometer long and less than a kilometer wide. Although, like this behind us, is much narrower, which is more ideal for them. And their ideal canyons have tall, steep walls, like these nice, beautiful featured walls behind us with lots of ledges, wacos, and pockets to perch in and other complex rock features. And they prefer a multi-store vegetation layer, both to have trees to perch in and a lot of understory and downed wood that rodent species they prey on can inhabit. Um, and they tend to hunt from perches with a sit and wait approach, just waiting for the prey to come by and swooping down and snagging them silently. And most of their prey are mid-sized rodents, uh, largely wood rats, voles, uh, pocket gophers, and deer mice. Although they have been known on occasion to also hunt for amphibians, lizards, other reptiles, um, and sometimes even large insects and bats. And their main threats from other predators are primarily raptors, especially great horned owls. Mexican spotted owls mate monogamously in the long term, coming back to the same territories year after year, but they do not mate every year typically, unless they have a fantastic prey source on hand. And their courtship period begins in March, after which they will lay one to three, sometimes four eggs per clutch, which will hatch four to six weeks after they're laid. And during the incubation period and the first two weeks after the nestlings hatch, the female will typically just stay on the nest incubating and caring for the young while the male goes off and hunts feeding the female and the young. And the young will fledge roughly five weeks after they hatch and stick with the parents for a few months until they disperse in the fall. And they have a life expectancy in the wild maximum of about 16 to 17 years. 
Mixing spot owls were federally listed in 1993, and in 2004, 3.5 hectares of critical <coughs> habitat were designated in the U.S., of which Zion National Park is all designated. And most of the pressure on these owls from outside sources are from commercial logging and development for habitat loss, um, along with large landscape scale stand replacing fires and habitat alteration through these fire suppression efforts. There's still a lot we don't know about how recreation impacts Mexican spotted owls, which these surveys and long-term monitoring will help us understand and inform our management decisions. And they're very sensitive to noise, so please try to remember this when recreating these canyons. So to conduct surveys out here, I'll imitate a four note call. Don't want to do it too loudly right now before the survey starts, but it will sound something like this. Although much louder when I actually do the survey. And so I'll go up and down the canyon, kind of scrambling through whatever's in front of me, which uh, sometimes gets pretty hairy and interesting. And I'm calling it points roughly 500 meters apart to get full audio coverage throughout the whole canyon. And then if they do hear me, they'll respond with a four note call of their own. And at that point, I will not respond because the reason that works is that they think I'm simply another owl invading their territory. And their response is trying to tell me that this is their territory and to stay out. And we try to minimize our calling, giving the owls plenty of time to respond. So we don't try to stress them out and distract them from hunting and feeding their young. And only a limited number of our staff are permitted to do these surveys by U.S. Fish and Wildlife. So unless you have a permit, that is the only legal way to do these surveys. And just to remember that this is their home, so please try to keep a noise to a minimum in these canyons. So about this time, it's getting pretty close to sunset, so I'm going to head up canyon and start doing my survey. So come join. just flew. 